Hello, Smart Scholars. This is Dr. Eve Mboso. Welcome to another section on the endocrine system. Today, we are going to be looking at the classification of hormones. And there are different criteria we'll be looking at. Classification based on solubility, classification based on structure, classification based on the site of synthesis to the site of action. So now let's delve into our section for today. So based on the structure, we have different classes of hormones. We have the hormones that are steroid-derived hormones. These steroid-derived hormones are, pick their parent um, structure from the structure of cholesterol. Now, the hormones that mostly fall into this class are called steroid hormones, mostly the reproductive hormones, cortisol and aldosterone. Now, we have progesterone, testosterone, estradiol. We see that they share the same parent structure with the cholesterol. Where is cholesterol? Cholesterol is a very important molecule because it's found along the cell membranes. Cholesterol can be gotten from the diet we eat. Cholesterol can also be gotten from bile acids. Cholesterol can also be gotten from the uptake of low density lipoprotein. So we have hormones that are from this parent structure called cholesterol, which share the same parent the structure of this, and these are the, mostly the reproductive hormones. Then the other hormones that are not derived from the cholesterol or the steroid compounds are the amino acid deriv derivatives. These hormones pick their parent compound from a single amino acid structure. For example, melanin, for example, tyroxine, which is derived from the thyroid, which is from the thyroid hormone. Now, we also have the hormones that are derived, all right, from proteins. Now, this class of hormones have a sequence of amino acid. That means they have more amino acids compared to the amino acid that is hormones that are derived from a single structure of amino acid. Now, and it, a classical example of such a hormone is insulin. Insulin has a sequence of about 51 amino acids, and insulin plays a major role in glucose metabolism. A derangement in this hormone results in a pathological condition called diabetes mellitus. Now, so by way of recap, all right, classification of hormones based on structure. You have the steroid hormones, which are all derived from cholesterol. We have the amino acid derived hormones, tyroxine, melanin, and then we also have the protein hormones, which is insulin. Then we also have the fatty acid hormones. We also have the eicosanoids. Now, Let's get into another classification. Classification based on, okay, before I go on, I think I'll just have to write this down. So you have based on structure, which we have actually dealt with, all right? So under the structure, you have the steroids, you have the amino acid, all right, derivatives, all right, which is derived from a single amino acid, all right? Then you have Okay, the protein, all right, hormones. Then you have the fatty acid, all right, derived hormones. So these are the eicosanoids. So now based, this is the classification based on structure. Now classification based on solubility. Some hormones are lipid soluble while some are not lipid soluble or what you will call hydrophobic or hydrophilic. Now, what do we mean by this hydrophobic and hydrophilic terms? Let's go back to the cell. Now, you have a cell structure and the cell has membranes. Now, the membrane, all right, is mostly lipid soluble. You have a lot of cholesterol and okay, that is that surrounds the lipid, the, the cell and maintains the integrity of the cell. Now you have hormones that can transcend the lipid bilayer of the cell and get into the cell and act within the cell. Now these class of hormones are either called the steroid hormones, all right, or you have the lipid 
soluble hormones or you have the hydrophobic so you have lipid soluble you have the steroid hormones then you have the hydrophobic from the word water so water hating so if you do if you have the water hating all right hormones you also have the water loving hormones which are the hydrophilic all right hormones now this class of hormones that can pass through the cell membrane all right fall under this class all right and what do they do they form a hormone receptor complex within the cell the bind all right to the nuclear membrane and affect the dna all right process all right transcription process within the cell now this class of hormones all right their effect lingers over a long period of time like the estrogen testosterone this class of hormones all right they transcend they bind they form the hormone receptor complex and then they bind to the nuclear membrane where they affect the transcription process so now this is another class of hormone classification based on solubility so now we have the other class of hormones that cannot transcend the membrane what do they do they bind to the receptors around the cell membrane and they send the signal they send the signal into the cell and cause whatever modifications within the cell now these class of hormones all right they are mostly the amino acid derivative hormones all right or the proton hormones now how do they work what they do is that they activate a secondary messenger inside the cell so once the hormone binds to the receptors at the surface of the cell of the, the plasma membrane they send a signal which is mostly all right the act which activates the secondary messengers now what are these secondary messengers i'll give an example we have cyclic adenosine monophosphate all right we have calcium these are just some example we have tyrosine kinase all right i'll just write it down so that we get it properly all right tyrosine kinase these are just a few examples of the secondary messengers so what they do is that these secondary messengers signal all right send the signal and they act as the messengers for the primary messenger which is the hormone and what happens is that they, they exert their effect now remember hormones are target specific so every cell that is receptive responsive to a hormone must have a receptor that all right the hormone would recognize and attach to now the next classification is based on site of synthesis and site of action now a classical hormone is synthesized by a gland and then it travels along the bloodstream to target organs all right where it exerts their effect so what happens is that they bind to receptors all right or and, and then or transcend the cell membrane now there are some other hormones all right that all right do travel the distance but act in the same cell that synthesizes them example the prostaglandins these prostaglandins are synthesized in the ovaries and so what happens is that all right they don't get to travel so we call this class of hormones all right the paracrine or we also have another class of hormones we call them the autocrine now what they do is that they travel a short distance or they act within the same cell that they are synthesized so so far we have looked at four criteria um, classification of hormones based on structure, classification of hormones based on solubility, classification of hormones based on the site and synthesis of action. So finally, we are going to draw the curtain by looking at classification of hormones based on the organ they are synthesized in. So now look at, we have the ovaries, the testes. These are called reproductive hormones. This ovaries synthesize and secrete estrogen and progesterone the testes 
synthesizes testosterone. Then we have the adrenal hormones. These ones synthesize and secrete the glucocorticoids and the mineralocorticoids. So we have looked at the classification of hormones based on these four criteria, structure, solubility, site of action, and we have also looked at the site of synthesis and release. So do drop your comments in the comment section below and make sure you subscribe. Bye-bye.